G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Saturday afternoon here in Australia and a couple of good news stories uh, that I found. Uh, not so good for everyone, particularly this one, uh, but for the rest of us, uh, good to know about anyway, at least in my opinion. All right, so here, first one. Two big investors who sold their Bitcoin would be up 40% today. So this is a good reason why HODL is a great method. You know, depending on the time, you don't want to really hodl through a bear market unless you're, you know, planning to simply hold for the really, really long term, then you can. Otherwise, it's a good idea to sort of sell some of yours, uh, you know, when there's a retracement uh, likely, and especially if you're in a bear market. Now, again, not financial advice, just personal opinion. You know, take some profits. There's a good saying, no one ever lost money taking profits. Yeah, you could lose possible uh, future financial gains, but as long as you're taking some money when you're in profit, you can't lose. You just simply can't lose. That's the way it works. Uh, you just will have lost unrealized profits maybe in the future, but they're not guaranteed. What's guaranteed is the money that you have at that time. And if you're in profit and you take that profit, you made money, simple as that. All right, so we'll go on. In the past few months, there have been two prominent big sales of Bitcoin. Both investors would have profited had they held on. So Dave Portnoy and Keith McCulloch sold all their Bitcoin at $11,000 to $12,000. The price of BTC has increased by at least 40% since then. This could have led to notable, notable profit, uh, profits today. So particularly uh, Portnoy is the one I'm thinking of more. Like he had Chainlink as well and you know, unfortunately he bought uh, near the top, but he should have just held, at least in my opinion. Again, not financial advice, but particularly with his Bitcoin, like he'd be up. He got into the stock market and that's all been going down and he's been saying that he's, you know, going to come back to crypto and all the rest of it because, you know, apparently, you know, we're all mad and all the rest of it. <laughs> you know, I, I guess it's good that he's coming back, but he's going to come back and have to buy in at a higher price. And, you know... <laughs> that Murphy's kind of law thing, he'll probably buy in at the next cycle uh, sort of peak uh, and then there'll be a big retracement after it and he'll panic and try and sell again. He just, you know, he doesn't understand the markets enough to know that the reason the gains are so massive is because the losses can be, you know, almost as massive, you know, depending on when you buy. If you buy really at the wrong time, the, mo the losses can be absolutely horrendous. But if you buy at the right time, the gains can be life-changing and then the losses you know, aren't so bad. Again, depending where in the cycle you're buying it. But this is a perfect example of if you've done your research, you understand where it is in the market cycle, yeah, you've got to understand market cycles at first, and if you know that you're early in a bull trend, just buy and hold. That's the most simplest thing to do. Simply find the good products, buy, hold, Give yourself a price that, you know, it has to get to, not has to, but, you know, get to this and then I'm going to start scaling out. Again, you buy something at $10, it gets to $15, sell a tenth of it. If it gets to uh, $17.50, sell another tenth of it. If it gets to 20 sell another tenth of it and so on and so on. And I'm not saying that's the exact way you should do it, but something like that. You cannot lose if you sell when you're in profit. You're only going to lose if you sell when you're in the loss. Simple as that. And yeah, look, if investing was super easy, everyone would be doing it and everyone would be making millions of dollars. That's not the way it works. And that's why a lot of us get other people to do it. But a lot of these so-called, you know, experts don't even uh, do that well. Uh, you know, there's some that do, don't get me wrong. There's some legit experts out there who, dearly, who do really well. But a majority of them, again, you know, they're... You know, investors would have been telling you only 18 months ago, don't touch Bitcoin, it's dead, it's crap, and cryptocurrencies are this and that, particularly with banks and things like that. And now all of a sudden they're like, oh no, here we've got this platform, you know, we'll custody uh, your crypto for you and all the rest of it. Sometimes the best person to trust is yourself, but not always. If you're a, <laughs> you know, what we'd like to say, a degenerate gambler and all the rest of it, maybe you shouldn't do the investing and you should leave it to somebody else. You don't want to grab your money and just kind of make it as a bet and go, radio. Uh, you know, I'm going to throw it all on black and just hope for the best. That's a really, really bad idea. But it doesn't take a genius to do some research uh, and have basics under, basic understandings of market cycles uh, and the options that are out there. Don't just get sucked into the mainstream stuff. Although in saying that, 
cryptocurrency is about to become mainstream. Uh, you know, the again, the banks are custodying it, governments are regulating it. So mainstream uh, is just a stone's throw away. Now, it might not happen, you know, by sort of September, December, January 2000, sorry, September, November, December next year, or, you know, early 2022, but definitely uh, in the next sort of, let's say five to 10 years, uh, 10 is probably pushing it out a long way, they will be mainstream. And I think most people will have some kind of digital asset, uh, particularly things like Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, likely Litecoin as it's, you know, been regulated uh, yeah, yeah, and other ones, hopefully XRP and we're going to talk about XRP. Uh, hopefully that gets put down as not a security uh, and yeah, we can go from there. But anyway, hold, that's the story. We are in a bull market. It is as simple as find something that you believe is good, buy some, hold until, you know, let's say September to December next year and then start to scale out, you know, completely sell it all if you want to or just sell some of it, as I said, in stages before, give yourself certain price targets and, you know, you should be fine. But again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. I have my... Uh, way of doing things and you've got to have yours and don't let anyone else tell you how it should be done you know take advice from people about how they think it should be done but don't simply take their word as gospel don't take mine don't take some other social media uh giants uh word for it or even you know a so-called expert take you know take in all the information you can and hopefully you can make some better decisions about, you know, how much this fan fund manager should handle of your portfolio, how much you should handle of your portfolio, how much should go into uh, traditional stocks and how much should go into housing and how much should go into crypto. You need to make some better decisions uh, to assist your path to financial uh surety and make sure that you're going to have enough to retire and all the rest of it maybe even retire early don't just simply leave it up to others they aren't going to act in your best interests they're going to act in their best interests they're there to make money and don't get me wrong if you make money then they make money but even if you lose money they can make money so just be wary of that all right stone ridge uh, assets so just not long ago in october they bought ten thousand bitcoin Again, this is big institutional money. They were buying it at, I don't know, eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. It's still early. My personal opinion, not financial advice, but it is still early. This $16,000 that it's at now, don't get me wrong, you could buy it today and tomorrow it's worth 14000 even maybe 13800 I doubt it, but it is possible. But if you just simply hold through that and then, you know, six months time, 12 months time from now, you're probably going to be sitting pretty. There's no guarantees in life. You've got to make your own mind up. But the smart money is buying right now. They are literally buying right now. I think it's highly unlikely that smart money is going to put all this money in and then they're going to simply uh, sell it at a loss. They won't. They'll hold. And if they're not selling and I'm not selling and you're not selling, the price of Bitcoin will continue to go up because it has no choice. That's the only way Bitcoin is going to find its way back onto the market. If everyone wants to buy it, but no one's selling it, the price will just keep climbing to a price where someone is happy to sell it. And then I guess you've just got to wait to see if someone's happy to buy it for that price. But that's generally how markets work anyway. All right, last but not least, analyst XRP can reach 77 cents and outperform Bitcoin in 2021. Look, in saying that, really a majority of the alts will outperform Bitcoin. The good ones anyway, the ones with uh, some good uh, development, uh, you know, sometimes it's just hype, so even some bad ones will outperform Bitcoin. Bitcoin is generally the most stable of all the cryptocurrencies. The others are a lot more volatile. Like if Bitcoin goes up a 10x, then other good altcoins, and again, good ones, not just, you know, complete and utter crap ones and scams, they're not going to do anything, although you know sometimes even scam coins go up a whole lot but please don't take that as i'm telling you to invest in scam coins do not i'm just saying 
a lot of the uh, altcoins in the top 100 and you know who knows where but they'll outperform Bitcoin Bitcoin is the most stable but it's still super volatile again it can go from 20,000 down to 3,800 in a matter of you know a couple of months and then it's back up to 16,000 again so I think it's quite easy that XRP can outperform Bitcoin not saying that it will I just think it's quite easy that it could speaking of let's go have a look right here's XRP against BTC so we can hit see this is really the cycle low this red line down here now there was one wick that kind of wicked all the way down here I don't know what happened on that day but outside of that this red is kind of the cycle low since 2017 March there we go so we can see we came down bounced off here and this is just getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter until at some stage something's going to happen and we can see this blue line is kind of the next cycle low that was around about down here now it's been in the bear market you know really ever sort of since 2018 it had another pump up uh, and then in two, late 2018 had another pump up so it has a sort of reasonably flat bottom now again let's put in uh, a line here we can go from sorry get rid of that mm, where are we going to no that's all right so trend line if we kind of take it from here and go to there and then we'll bring this back even further and so again that's around about there Roughly thereabouts. All right, so we got that. And now we can really take this one. This is obviously getting to uh, a tipping point here. This has just been calling again. There was that one wick, and there's always going to be one random wick that does something else. But this is just coiling and getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Uh, and again, this is against BTC. So this could break below. But I just, um, I have a sneaky suspicion it's about to go the other way. That it's about to start to see one of these moves. Because this isn't the best one. But we can see it was down here, dropped down. And then it rocketed up. Come down a bit and then it rocketed up. Came down a bit and then it rocketed up. So it is super volatile. And when it moves... It moves in a really big way I think it's about to repeat itself because you can go back to 2000 I think 12 and it does something uh, like this uh, previously before it got to these points so again this only goes back to 2017 I think 2011 2012 ripple first came out and it's been doing this ever since but the old cycle high generally becomes the cycle low for the next one so I don't know what price XRP is going to go to and again this is against Bitcoin but I think this is going to be the cycle low for the next one we'll have to wait and see let's have a look against USD so again it doesn't go back far enough but it has done this kind of move before so it pumps up and then it finds its low so this is the accumulation zone if you're able to pick it up sort of for around 14 15 cents to around about sort of 17 18 cents uh, you know you, you did well I got some at 18 cents I was lucky uh, a majority of it I think I got more around sort of uh, 19 to 21 cents and I think maybe even up to about 22 cents but I did get some uh, in this uh, golden sort of pocket here and again this is against the US dollar so whenever it dipped down here it generally pumped up and again there was December 2017 and we're just coiling getting lower and lower there was obviously the COVID thing that affected everything but otherwise every time it's tipped in this uh, kind of range it's found some support and bumped up and now we can see it's been moving up ever since that COVID now don't get me wrong it travels sideways a little bit but it is slowly but surely moving upwards particularly on this bottom trend line here the uh, lows are getting higher not there obviously but that was just because it had such a good pump of course it was going to retrace so it has retraced and now it's slowly moving up and now we've just got to wait to see whether this is going to hold 
My sneaky suspicion is uh, it is going to hold. Probably going to come back up here. We may even come back down and test, but I think we're going to break out to the upside. Time will tell, and particularly if uh, you know they get the regulatory, regulatory clarity that they're after, I think you're going to see XR poof, uh, poof. <laughs> move very, very quickly. I'm a believer in XRP. I like Brad Garlinghouse and everything that uh, he says, and you know they have so many partners out there. To think that it's going to fail, uh, yeah. I mean, look, there's plenty of XRP haters out there. Don't get me wrong. Plenty of people, oh, it's centralized, it's this and that and blah, blah, blah. A majority of cryptocurrencies are centralized. There's very few that actually aren't truly centralized. They just try to pretend like they're uh, decentralized, but you know they have four or five majority stakeholders with most of the coins. Uh, sure, they have millions of coins or you know hundreds of thousands of coins out there owned by other people, but the majority are owned by you know four different people or four different groups, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so yeah, be careful with getting uh, caught up in that decentralized. It has to be decentralized. It's not decentralized enough. Well, XRP has a ton of nodes out there. Yes, they are the majority holders. They own the bulk of it. But there's mi uh, sorry, there's definitely millions of people that own uh, XRP out there. But I, I know they've got a number of nodes. I can't remember exactly how many, but plenty of nodes out there. They are you know they're not completely centralized. But again, most cryptocurrencies are. So I think XRP is looking pretty sweet and it's had a pretty good pump today. I think we're trading at around about there, 27 cents, there you go. If we could make it up to that sort of 30 cent mark, uh, then we're starting to look pretty promising. So that's around about here, but more so over here on it, 30 cents. I think there's a good chance we're gonna pop out and then you know start to move up to here, around sort of 50 cents. And then that article said you know 77 cents, so where is that? So that's, yeah, sort of a roundabout here then, I guess. Uh, interesting. I'd love to see it at that. And, you know, you can get on YouTube and find a ton of videos out there of price predictions. You know, some people are saying it'll go to, you know, $100. Other people say thousands and, you know, all, all the rest of it. I'm not really sure. It's hard to know. If it gets adopted, uh, you know, as a uh, trans-border uh facilitating you know facilitator uh, and how much of the market uh, it can uh, close in on yeah the price could be massive I think you know a hundred two hundred three hundred dollars per coin uh, wouldn't be completely out of the realms I'm not saying it's going to do that I'm just saying I don't think it would be out of the realms I'm I'm thinking you know the cycle high for this uh, bull run if it's again it doesn't get mainstream adoption and all the rest of it it just kind of repeats what it's done before uh, I'm going to say probably $11, $12 per um, XRP uh, would seem pretty reasonable considering what it's done before. Again, it's gone from here, so it was less than a cent, February 2017, to basically, let's say, February 2018. In a year, it went to $3, so it was less than a cent, and it went to $3. That's a pretty big bloody move. Let's have a look. Let's find out. So I went from down here at less than a cent. So it moved 68,000% in a year. 68,000%. And now it's found its bottom and it's starting to move again. And it's going to probably do something similar to this. And again, if you go back and could look, 68,000%. Now I'm not saying it's going to do 68,000% again. Let's say it only does half of that. So what is 34,000%? All right, let's have a look. To where we are right now. We go roughly sort of here. There we go. Sorry. All right. 34,000%. So there's 32,000%. So let's say that gets us to nearly $100. So if it does half of what it done last time, that gets us to $100. Food for thought, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm not saying it's going to do that. I don't expect it to do that. But that would be only half the move of what it did last time it would get to nearly $100. I'm thinking again, we're probably more gonna be around 
you know, sold at $12. So let's see where that goes from here. Let's get us up to seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, that's four thousand two hundred and seventy-seven percent. If we get up to twelve dollars, that's a pretty good move, and that is a pretty good return. And again, I think that would possibly be on the low side. I think it could definitely go a lot higher. I know. Uh, again, other people are predicting more sort of. You know, maybe twenty-eight, thirty dollars, and again, other people are predicting hundreds, and other people are predicting thousands. And there's even people that said XRP was supposed to be a ten thousand dollars stable coin. Look, if XRP went to ten thousand dollars per coin, uh, that would be the greatest wealth transfer uh, known to man of all kind. That'd well outdo Bitcoin and everything. Whether it's going to do that or not, <laughs> you know, I don't know, and I think it's unlikely. But oh, if it did go to ten thousand dollars a coin. I would say most people would be cheering, would be absolutely stoked. But anyway, getting away from all of that, I think this is looking pretty good for a breakout. Now, again, this is just against the dollar. It's slowly moving up, and I think we're going to break out to the upside. And, you know, my target would be sort of somewhere around, you know, 50 cents. Could go a little bit lower. Again, you know, maybe we've got to sort of come to here first, get around about 36 cents. But I think up around the kind of 50 cent mark would really be where I'd hoping to see it go. All right, Ethereum against USD. Ethereum is absolutely killing it. And I don't put Ethereum against Bitcoin because it's outperformed Bitcoin for me. Uh, I think Ethereum uh, needs to be compared against the dollar uh, and BTC needs to be compared against the dollar uh, and, you know, everything else. You know, it's up to you. You've got to look at your percentage gains. If you've got something that's completely outperforming Bitcoin and they compare Bitcoin against the dollar, well, then why not compare that against the dollar? But really, you should compare them against both just to get a better view. The dollar isn't the be-all and end-all, but likewise, comparing it against BTC isn't the be-all and end-all. You've got to get a bit of an aggregate from the two. But I'm just going uh, against the dollar for Ethereum. I can go against BTC. Uh, but for now, I'm just watching this line and this line's been holding. Now we broke that $400 mark and now we're up to getting close to sort of $480. There is going to be some resistance here and we can see we're already uh, meeting some resistance. So we've been here before. So 400 sort of 77 uh, and we got, uh, we got there and we've rejected from it. Now it did wick up to 400 sort of 80, nearly $490. And if we scale out a bit, this is going to take a while, but there is some sort of confluence here. That's why we're going to have a hard time breaking through this. I don't think uh, it's going to happen overnight. I think we're going to reject from here, possibly come back, touch this uh, line here before we start to move up. Uh, but the good thing is once we sort of break this, really then we're starting to look at, you know, 600-ish dollars. And again, we get up to here, sort of $800. Then we get up to sort of around about $1,200. Uh, and again, so there's not a lot here. There's only a couple of real resistance points, but looking promising. Now, last but not least, BTC. It just keeps moving. It's broken uh, out of that triangle that we had put in there. Again, it's finding a little bit of resistance here, so it is pulling back. And the weekend's here. We could have a pullback. We absolutely could have a pullback. But I don't think uh, if there is a pullback, we're going to see anything sort of too major, I think. We might pull back to inside this uh, triangle before we then just start to make our next move up. I think uh, the 19,000 uh, sort of 600, 700 dollar level, I think it's going to be broken uh, in the next two weeks. That's my personal opinion. I think we're going to make another couple of moves like this. I think this kind of stuff is going to be repeated. And once we hit 20,000, uh, we might find some resistance there uh, and kind of retrace and come back. But again, there's every possibility we just rocket straight through it and we just continue to go from strength to strength to strength, at least for a while. I think the major retracements are going to start around $25,000 to $35,000. I think you know most of the institutional buyers and that will have likely got in and made their positions. Uh, so they will be happy to fluctuate the markets a little bit. But for me, I'm buying and holding. Uh, not until we get over $20,000 will any Bitcoin that I 
make I purchase, it's all my long term hold until after twenty thousand. Then after twenty thousand, I've just got to wait and see. You know, I, I could have all my Bitcoin as long term holds up until twenty five, thirty five thousand. It's really going to be dependent on where we are late next year, September, December through to January, February uh, is where I'm going to kind of decide. So earliest September next year, so September twenty. 21, I will start to see where I'm at and let's say we're at 150,000. I'm not saying we're getting there, but let's say we are at 150,000. Then I'm probably going to say, all right, everything uh, from sort of 30,000, 35,000 uh, onwards, I'm happy to sell that Bitcoin, but anything below uh, that $35,000 mark is simply my long term holds because I don't think we'll come back down and see those prices again. That's the way I'm going to determine it. But again, if we're at, you know, 288,000, 300,000, then I'll have to revisit that and maybe everything that I bought under 50,000 will be my long term hodl and only the Bitcoin that I bought after that would I be happy to sell. A dollar cost average on Bitcoin generally most sort of weeks, fortnights, depending you know how it works and how much money I got. I didn't buy any Bitcoin this time. Uh, I got myself some UBT and some Stellar today. So they were just the ones that I wanted to get a little bit more of and I thought they're in a reasonable accumulation range. But you know, I've been wrong before and I could be wrong again. You go out and make your own mind up. All right, this one's gone on for a while and I've got to get ready to go to work. Lucky me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hit that like button and subscribe button down below. Hopefully you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.